Hello and welcome back to the Maya Hand Rigging Tutorial. In this episode we're going to finish rigging the hand that we started in the previous episode. Now where we left off we created uh, the hand mesh itself to uh, give us the skin and the visual appearance of the hand. We created the skeleton which is the bone structure beneath the hand and we also bound the skeleton to the skin so that whenever we move the skeleton uh, the um, skin moves right along with it. Now what we're going to do is create some controls to assist us. Now while it is possible to completely animate our character by manipulating the skeleton alone, it's not very easy. Uh, those bones are buried uh, inside of the skin so they're hard to click on, uh, they're hard to rotate and position precisely. So we're going to uh, create some controls that can sit outside of the skin uh, that are easy to select and that can do some advanced features that would be uh, tedious to do uh, by manipulating uh, simply the skeleton by itself. Now the first control we're going to create is a parent control. And a parent control uh, controls everything underneath it. Now uh, in Maya uh, we have things are arranged in hierarchies. The joint themselves are arranged in a hierarchy. And if I select the root joint here, and if you look in hypergraph, uh, we also selected it there, this is at the very bottom of a parental hierarchy. If I press W and move that around, the if I move the parent of the entire hi hierarchy, every child of that hierarchy uh, receives that translation as well. If I, ro if I rotate it, every child receives that rotation as well too. Uh, and I'm going to undo that. Uh, if I were to pick a bone a little bit farther down though, and if I rotate that bone, only the children of that uh, bone receive the uh, rotation. So uh, in order to start off our control hierarchy, it's a good idea to have a parent control that controls everything. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, we're going to start creating control by uh, selecting the uh, curves shelf on our uh, shelves here and clicking on the circle. And that's going to create a, a brand new circle on, uh, on the ground plane. Now uh, we're going to adjust the circle. We're going to scale it a little bit bigger. And you know this is simply for visual appearance. Um, it does not actually matter what your control looks like. This is simply something that you're designing so that it's easy to select and easy to identify. Um, uh, okay, and um, so that's the first step. Create a nice visual curve that's easy to pick out. Now we're going to uh, change its name so that people will know its control. So let's, because this is going to control the root of the entire hand, let's call it uh, control root. Okay. And notice uh, right now if we move it around, uh, it, it's right now it's just a simple nerves curve. It, it isn't doing anything. So now uh, next thing we're going to do is freeze transforms. And if you look at the channel box, uh, when we freeze transforms, what that does is it erases everything in the channel box. It sets it back so we have this nice, uh, this nice set of zeros and ones. Um, now that information has not vanished. Uh, Maya still remembers it. But um, by doing a freeze transforms, uh, that becomes uh, hidden to the user. So we have this nice clean uh, channel box to work with, uh, rather than all those uh, confusing floating point numbers. OK, now, uh, now that we've done that, we're going to parent or create a parent constraint between our root control and the root of the skeleton. So uh, let's start off. Let's select the nerves curve. And let me unclick that so I don't accidentally select the mesh. And now I'm going to select the uh, root of the skeleton. And I'm going to go to Constraint and Parent. I'm going to create a parent constraint. I'm going to accept the defaults they have here and click Add. And now, when I move that root control, everything follows along with it because everything is now constrained as if that control is a parent. And uh, if I rotate that, or if I um, yeah, rotate that, the hand's going to rotate too, which is exactly what we want. That's exactly what we would expect a parent to do. 
Now uh, one thing we don't want to do is accidentally scale that, so what we're going to do is click and drag in the channel box here. We're going to right click and we're going to uh, lock and hide selected. When we do that, those uh, attributes vanish from the channel box. Uh, that doesn't mean they've been deleted, it just means that it's no longer possible for us to access them. So while uh, we can still translate and rotate our root control, we won't be able to accidentally scale it because it wouldn't make any sense to scale it. Uh, we don't want to do that. Now, um, we, we have our parent control. It might not look like much right now because we could just as easily uh, translate and rotate the root of our hand skeleton. So let's add a second control that is able to uh, manipulate the wrist. And we're going to start off in the same manner. We're going to create a NURBS curve. Going to scale that out. Let's uh, maybe make this one look a little bit fancier. Um, going to go to the control vertices and we select those ones. Move them back, just sort of so we get sort of a bowed shape. And select those ones. Move them forward. And th this is just something to make it uh, easy to identify. You can uh, choose whatever shape you want, whatever uh, works for you. Let's go back to object mode and move that up. Whoops. Object mode. Okay, and uh, translate that up. Now, uh, what we want is for this NURBS curve to control that wrist bone right there. So we're going to move it into approximately the right place. And now what we want to do is have the pivot of this NURBS curve uh, control the pivot, uh, control the uh, rotation of that um, of the wrist bone. Now, uh, in order to do that, we have to move the pivot so that it's directly on top. So it's close right now, but we want it to be exact. So let's press the insert key. So we're now in the pivot editing mode. Actually, let's move the pivot right out here just so we can have a good look at it. Now, if at this point, if we decide to rotate that nerves curve now, it would rotate around that pivot point we just moved out there. But we don't want the pivot all the way out there. So let's go back, uh, let's undo that, let's go back into pivot mode. I'm going to press and hold the letter B to enable snapping. And then I'm going to click and drag that so it snaps to the uh, center of the wrist there. So now when I rotate that nerves curve, it's going to uh, rotate exactly around where that joint is. I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo that. Alright, now what we want to do is create an orient constraint. Now an orient constraint means that whenever I change the rotation uh, of this curve, it's also going to affect the orientation of that joint there. So, so let's start by selecting the nerves curve and let's select our skeleton um, oops. Let me uh, just uh, shrink that by pressing the uh, negative sign a couple times. Uh, sometimes you can, the uh, gizmos can be so big they're hard to control. Uh, okay, we accidentally selected the root there. Don't want to do that. One more time. Select the nerves curve. Select the wrist joint. There we go. Now we're going to go up to constrain. And we're going to go to Orient, click there, and OK, that all looks good. Going to click Add. So now we've just created an Orient, an orient constraint. So if we click that and we uh, press E, let's uh, press the plus sign to grow that back up again. Now whenever we uh, rotate that nerves curve, the uh, wrist goes along with it. And that's pretty good. Uh, there's one problem though is that uh, if we ever select this control and uh, we move it out of the way, we're going to leave that nerves curve behind. Uh, we don't want to do that. So in order to make sure this all stays together as a package, we're going to parent the uh, wrist control to the root control. And let me just open up the outliner here. Here you can see, well, there's the wrist control. We haven't named it yet, so let's give it a name. Let's call that control wrist. Okay, now what we're going to do is select the uh, wrist control, 
select the root control and press the letter P for parent. And now the risk control is parented to the root control. So if we select that and move it, the, uh, the risk control comes along with it. And if we uh, change the rotation of the risk control, um, that, that does exactly what we'd expect. The wrist can bend and it is a parent of the root control. So let's control Z to put that back to where it was. One last thing, just like we did with parent control, is we're going to go into the channel box and we're going to get rid of the uh, attributes we don't want. So it doesn't make any sense to translate the uh, wrist control. It doesn't make any sense to scale it or change its visibility. So we're going to right click come down here and we're going to walk and hide selected. And now uh, we have reduced that to the minimum number of controls we want. Um, and this is a uh, great start for uh, rigging the hand and adding the controls we want to the hand. Uh, we're going to continue uh, with, with more rigging uh, and rigging the fingers in the next episode.